All right, great. So a common problem is data transformation. This is faced by over 70% of Inspire implementers, which is mostly because of transformation complexity. When you're moving from, let's say, a shapefile to a complex GML file, which is one of the most common cases, you're essentially moving from a Tableau form to a very complex nested form. So the schema mapping has to be correct. That takes a lot of time. The transformation in itself has to be executed correctly. And once it's done, you have to validate the transformed data too. So a brief history on Hale Studio. This is our tool that's specifically here to deal with the Inspire implementation. It was developed in 2006, 2011 with the help of Humboldt. That's also a part of the acronym where it's the, actually the full form is the Humboldt Alignment Editor. We have over 1,000 active users and 5,000 downloads per year, and we've had major deployments in the city of Hamburg in, uh, with the armed forces in Germany, with Prisma Solutions in Austria, and many others. This is possible thanks to the contributions of Fraunhofer Geosolutions in Italy and Epsilon Italia and many other organizations. But what exactly is Hail Studio? So it's an ETL tool. Okay. Yep. Yep, there we go. So it's an ETL tool that's used to explore complex models and data. You can author efficient transformation mappings with this declarative mapping paradigm, get real-time preview and validation publishing as shown in the map at the bottom left corner. It provides interactive documentation, which actually means that you can see how a project was done, what kind of transformations were done, and how you, you can even play around with the mappings if you feel free to, if you want to do so. It's an open source platform, of course, so it, you can really full, uh, reap the full benefits of it with the custom developments. So the declarative mapping paradigm is something, okay, this is really not cooperating with me. <laughs> so the declarative ma mapping paradigm that you see here, it allows you to see what your data looks like before the transformation, when the alignment is actually done, how it's done, and what your data is going to look like once you move on to it. Now, this paradigm is completely independent of the data complexity. What this essentially means is that no matter how complex your data is, you can use the same alignment functions. So it's easy to author and reuse with the documentation. It's fast and scalable, and you can apply it to any stru structure and data format since it doesn't depend on the data complexity. Now we're going to move on to a use case, which is the AAA to Inspire use case. Um, so the AAA standard is a German conceptual application schema created in UNML. It's very complicated, even more so than Inspire, and there was a lot of variability across the 16 states that wanted to implement it. This is due to their different interpretations of the standard, and they had a different tech stack and legal requirements, which meant that their baseline with this AAA standard, their starting point was very different, and they all wanted the same, they all wanted to move on to the same end goal, which was Inspire compliance. Now, there were also geometry type mismatches to deal with. There were many split and merge operations. Um, and when you're doing that with a lot of complex data, this leads to a loss of information. We used Hale Studio, and the key here was the interactive documentation that was reused by various German organizations, so they could actually share the solution that they had. And uh, as you can see on the, on the slide over here, they could access the kind of mappings that were used for certain functions. The declarative uh, mapping paradigm also dealt with the data loss that was caused due to sp uh, with the split and merge functions. But, well, it's one thing to talk about it, it's another one to actually see it happen. So I'm going to do a little demonstration for you. And let's get Tails to your words. Yeah. So over here we can see the default view of Hale Studio. Now this represents the source data, this here is the target data, and that's everything that's going on. So this is one transformation that's already been done. Um, sadly, sadly, I can't actually do that because A, I don't know how to, and B, it's very, it takes a lot of time, it requires a lot of expert knowledge, but I, what I will do for you is show you how to transform one property to another according to the Inspire standard. Now, we can get a good idea of what's actually have happening within the data set by expanding this. So now we can see very nicely what's going on in the source data over here. Now, to upload your source data, you have to first upload the data schema, and then you upload the data within itself. And this is done by, upload, by uploading the schema from the same data set that you actually want to upload. This reduces any chance of upload mistakes. And the target data schema, well, we provide presets for that. It's built from the ground up to support the Inspire Open Standard. 
And here we can see that we have a code. Now we want to see what's actually happening within this. So we want to see the occurring values in this. Just going to click refresh. So we see that there are four codes. Now these four codes represent the type of water body it actually is. So is it a river, a channel, or a canal? And we want to map this onto somewhere in the target data set into the origin. Now this requires implicit knowledge of the inspired data, which you can find in documentation. And as for the specific knowledge about these codes, that's usually present within the documentation of the data set in itself. So this is OS Meridian 2 data, and you can find everything relevant to that in the documentation. Now through that, I know that 6232 is a canal. Everything which is a man-made water body, of course. And everything else here is natural in the form of rivers or channels and so on. And here we have the origin property, which is either man-made or natural. So we want to use this data to move on to origin over here. So for that, we already have code selected here, and we just click origin over here. Now what we want to do is actually set up the mapping in itself, which is done by this neat little button. And here we have the classification. So we'll do that. Now it shows the type where what it's going to, the source and the target is pretty clear. So to populate the source values, there's just a button over here, which is going to uh, populate it with, every, with the four codes. So there we go. Now the target values are not present because we want to map that right now. And for that, we just double click on it and enter a target value. So like I said, we know 6232 is, is a canal, which is man-made. And by definition, everything else is natural. So either I can double click on it, which I won't because I'm lazy, and just assign a fixed value, which is going to be natural. OK, so now we have this transformation set up, and we just finish it. And now we can see what's actually happened here. So we moved on to code from origin. And just by hovering over it, we can see what exactly it did. So we can also see that it's uh, automatically documented for each of the transformation mappings, which gives you a very good idea. And this is what actually helps with, the, with effective reuse. Now the next step is, well, where are we actually moving on to with Hale Studio? Where do we want to uh, develop it? Where do, what's the future looking like? So. Now we have two things planned out. Well, let me see here who actually uses Hale Studio. Okay, that's good. I'm happy to see that. Now we also need, well, we want to crowdfund ideas to what's the next functionality that we develop out here. So who here wants to actually help figure out what kind of, impl what kind of functionalities to implement? I'm not asking you to code anything, just uh, what you would prefer in terms of the functionality. Can I see a quick show of the hands for that as well? Yeah, so we want to see, well, if you want to uh, help us develop a certain functionality for Hale Studio, if you want to provide any input for that. So just a quick show of hands in that case. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So we have two things planned out so far. Well, there's the Hale 2.0, which offers a life transformer API, and this is a significant improvement over our standard, already powerful CLI API that it enables integration into your infrastructure. So this is very useful for systems integrators, and it's highly interactive and provides you with the option of live, live data manipulations. The, you can see an example of that in a slide there. That's what it's going to look like. And the next one is autonomous mapping suggestions. These demonstrate how others create similar transformation projects and apply best practices. So when you're working through a project, Hale Studio will give you an idea of what kind of mapping you can actually use. So this is useful for, well, the actual users of the software. and well, for beginners especially, because it really uh, decreases the learning curve. With the help of this, we estimate that you can save up to 90% of effort. Now, thank you very much for listening, everyone. Um, I'll be passing out a little survey later on, so it'd be very helpful if, you're, if, you fill me, if you fill that out, and we can decide which functionalities to move on with. And I'd also like to open the floor for questions. You, are, are there some questions? 
I, d I do have one. As, a, as it's an ETL, you have a driver to read different data sources. Mm -hmm. uh, which technology do you use? Is it based on GeoTools? Is it, is it a Java component? Um, honestly, I don't think I can tell you that. Like I said, I'm not a technical expert in the development of this, but I can definitely get back to you on that. To my knowledge, we're using a Photon engine, but the specifics of it I can't uh, really offer you. I'd rather not give you blank, blank answers. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot for, for the nice overview of Hale. I think it's a very important piece of software for those who implement uh, Inspire in Europe. My question is regarding alternative encodings, mm -hmm. because I know that currently it is possible to export GeoJSON inside. Yeah. I don't think there is support uh, for GeoPackage. What would be the strategy of WeTransform uh, and the community around Hale in order to address uh, those? So right now, GeoJSON is uh, all the craze because it's very good with the data visualization aspect, which happens to be a common problem of the inspired GMO data in and of itself. So to actually move on to a geo package, well, we have to look into concrete use cases, what's existing so far, and how we can improve on, uh, on certain capabilities and what the Inspire implementation falls short of. So if we can find something, the geo package is, well, we talked a little bit about it in your presentation. Uh, if we're talking about a use case where GeoPackage concretely addresses a detriment of the Inspire implementation, that would be of strategic value to us and uh, room for development over there. Other questions? Then thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot.